Yes, we can hear you. Ah, okay, great. I wasn't sure. Hi, I am Yelena. Uh, I am a participant here from Greece, from Cannes. However, I'm a native Montenegrin. Thank you, Yelena. Thank you. Hi, I'm Andri, and I'm from Cyprus. <laughs> And I really, I'm very happy that uh, I'm participating. I've seen so many friends from previous projects and from previous activities. So nice to see you all. <laughs> Hi, Andri. Nice to Hi. see you. Hello. Hi, I'm Martina uh, from Poland. And um, with curiosity for today. Thank you, Martina. Hello, I'm Tudor. I'm a project manager for uh, EVS in uh, YMC Romania, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Tudor. If Thank you're you. feeling shy, that's okay. We don't want to pressure you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Tudor. Hello, Hi. my name. Oh, please. Okay, go, go, go. <laughs> please, please. I'm Laura from Italy, and thank you so much for the for the meeting and the workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bertrand. Uh, I'm from France, uh, an organization called Eurasianet, and I'm glad to join back uh, the team of uh, Volume. Yay! <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Lina from Italy. Nice to meet you all. I see, I'm surprised that there are a lot of people from Italy here, but uh, that's super nice. I'm really looking forward for today because now I'm the project manager of two beautiful volunteers here. So I'm really curious about what you're going to tell us. Thank you. I hope it will be helpful for you. <laughs> now, so sure. now we feel the pressure. <laughs> Okay. Um, hello, I'm Irene. I'm from Italy too, but I'm working in uh, an association from Romania. So now I'm in Bucharest. Okay. Nice. Hi, I'm Alexandra. I'm connecting from Italy on behalf of an organization from the south of Italy. But I'm coming from Bucharest, Romania. <laughs> so as Irene, it's, it's, it's been a switch. <laughs> Great, thank you. You just exchanged. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Anastasia, working in a youth education center in Germany, in Bavaria, so not so far from Marcus. Well, yeah, <laughs> we know each other. And also, it was very interesting to see how many years you have been working together on different projects. And now, yeah, it's nice to be part of it, yeah, from our office. So thank you. Nice to have you be part of it. Um, I'm going to go, I guess. I was checking out who's going to speak. <laughs> My name is Valando. You pronounce it correctly. Maybe it's because we're from the same country. I'm from Cyprus. Uh, nice to see you all here, and I'm sure it's going to be great. <laughs> Thank you, Alana. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Maria from Cyprus. Um, I'm working at Synthesis. Hopefully, we will get the ASC accreditation soon. But currently, I am a mentor with uh, one of uh, the volunteers that Valanda is working with. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good luck with the accreditation. <laughs> Uh, I think we have just two more people. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carla. I'm from Spain, but yeah, I'm currently living and working in Romania. Nice to meet you all. And we have, I think, one more. Yeah. 
Hi, Maranta, also from Spain. And I will be EBS coordinator like in one month. So I hope to learn from all of you and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you so, so much for uh, sharing. Uh, and so to take it one step further and to understand what your backgrounds are, what your roles are and what your interests are in this um, workshop, uh, Masha will be sharing her screen with some instructions for Menti. Well, I will be sharing in the chat the links uh, for Menti just for like a few minutes activity there. So in the chat, you will find a link to Menti. Is everyone familiar already, more or less? Yes? Great. OK, so here on the screen, you have the instructions to enter Menti. So you have like different options if you enter via computer or via mobile phone. Um, if you go via computer, please just go to the long link, mentimeter.com. It's really, really the long link. Um, and then you will see the first page. If there will be necessary to type the code, you have the code here written. It's 5137-0093. Um, and also, if you will enter via mobile phone, uh, just take the short link, menti.com, and enter the code. If somebody has problems, I'm more than happy to help. Just, um, you can physically raise your hand or um, if you use the reactions underneath. I see some people already started, um, uh, started voting. And Basically, there are two questions um, about your role, and uh, one question is about your role in ESC volunteering projects, and the other about your interests. I think Masha will be sharing the results in a bit, so we can all see them. Is written uh, waiting for the next slide. Ah, okay. Right. Yes, Masha. Just a second. Okay. So I will just share the results uh, first for the first slide. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. I exited by mistake and I need to enter the code again. Okay, so the, the thing why we, would, uh, we put the main T here is that we see from, uh, okay, probably everybody works in the ESC um, field, but with Eleonora, we just wanted to see uh, what kind of tasks actually you are doing. Are you a coordinator, volunteer, I mean, current volunteer, ex-volunteer, uh, maybe a future mentor or future coordinator, just to see a little bit uh, where we are. Okay. Oh, I can see the second question as well, the, the voting. If you see some blas, it's from testing, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Great. Perfect. So yes, at the end, we will have uh, some time to share good or better practices, 
our uh, personal experiences, uh, especially, I think we have quite a lot of share uh, since the last year. Um, lots of plan Bs occurred, I would imagine. Um, it was quite challenging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, we have like learning new practices, improve management. Okay, cool. New tools, share tools. Okay. Hopefully we can deliver it. <laughs> we will do our best, we promise. Yes. But before we move on with um, sharing with you the tool that we came up with, there's one more uh, small, small activity that we would like to do. Masha will explain if I'm not mistaken. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, we uh, wanted to do like a small energizer and maybe to even like more connect or get to know each other. And it's connected with motivation. Since motivation is one of the steps we will present with Eleonora in our booklet, uh, I would like to ask you, if you look around, uh, around the place where you are, what is the object which gives you the motivation? If you have something around on your desk or if you're in your apartment, something that it's easier to get up in the morning or easier to perform at work or you know, just to lift up your energy and the spirit. Oh, I can see some mugs. Oh, I also have a mug. I assume that's coffee or tea. Oh, flowers, nice. If anybody wants to talk, just unmute yourself and share. I'm showing my headphones because I listen to music when I work. Irene, that's your notebook. That's a notebook. It's a painting. I don't understand. No, no, no. It's a painting that another volunteer made. And uh, yeah, I choose that because we work a lot with art. So oh, that's it's sweet. a motivation. <laughs> that's very sweet. So we saw some trees, some green to help our eyes. Another one. <laughs> Coffee, I imagine, when you showed your mugs. Great. Okay, then. Um, okay, so uh, we don't want to waste, waste the time that we have in uh, us, just me and Masha talking. So uh, we, would, uh, we would like to have some time in the end for you to share your experiences or your stories and um, you know exchange. So for now, we are going to share with you uh, the tool, the online booklet. We are going to share our screens to just briefly uh, go through the main points uh, through Pretty's presentation. But I just wanted to let you know that we won't go that deep into it because you will have it in your hands anyway you can read it at any time you want we prefer to use the time that we have left to discuss with you and uh, exchange so for now i'm going to upload in the chat it may need some time the pdf of the pretty presentation which is a bit uh malfunctioning in the sense that it shows the cover, then one chapter, then the cover again, and one chapter. So after our workshop, we will be uploading or sending you the more uh, final version of the booklet, but you can also have it for now. And without further ado, uh, just be patient with us. Uh, I will start sharing. Uh, let me see, okay. Present. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> as I've said before, we've created this um, working group of task management, basically from our need ourselves to see, okay, what are the steps? What are uh, the differences between each step? 
supervision, monitoring, um, motivation. Um, what tools do we use when going through these stages? Um, what tips do we have to exchange between ourselves? And so we put everything down to this online booklet, I guess, a guide. Um, so to start with, we hope that this will be useful for you. Either we saw that you're like coordinators or future coordinators or uh, mentors, um, and basically you're already more or less experienced, but we hope that maybe you are inspired with some new ideas or you have a new tool in your hands that you can teach other people about task assignments or you're just new to this and hopefully this will help you. So the first step of um, task management, we thought, was preparation. Masha, I give the mic to you. <laughs> Thank you, Leonora. So preparation. As we all know that the preparation to everything is like really important, especially, I mean, especially at the beginning. So it's also the same thing in project of volunteering in ESC. Uh, we focus more on preparation, like uh, task preparation, when the volunteer is already in our organization. So it means like in coordinating or hosting organization. What are the steps, what we do first with the volunteer? If we are in a role of coordinator um, of the volunteer. Uh, usually introduction of organizations yearly, yearly program, sorry for that, possible collaboration with other team members and organizations. So the volunteer is fully aware uh, what is the program of the organization where the person will work and it's easier than to adapt or to just um, modify the ideas of volunteer to your program. It's also really important to present what are the possible collaborations within the organization or out of organization for the volunteer. I think this is really important, especially in the small environments, like, I don't know, like rural environments where you don't have a lot of options. So it's even more important to connect and for networking. The support from coordinator and mentor is really important. Ooh. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. These are the technical difficulties. Sorry. <laughs> yes, okay. So sorry. No worries. No, the previous one, right? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Support from coordinator and mentor is really important. The volunteer should never feel that he or she is alone especially at the beginning, this is really important step. Actually, the support for, to the volunteer from the men, mentor or coordinator side is like really an ongoing process from the beginning of the mobility till the end of the mobility. Um, then the next step is like involving volunteer to current activities you already have. This is like a really cool that because the volunteer sees how your organization works in practice. So it can adapt some of your methods, the way how you deal with other people uh, within the group, within uh, the working group, or how do you do with others? It's really like this mentoring procedure. Then slowly when the volunteer is more or less like really fully aware what is going on in the local environment and organization, you give him, her or him a space and opportunity to start implementing his or her own ideas and start activities on their own. Of course, you're there supporting, evaluating, volunteer, as I said before, never should be alone. Um, then for, this is also like really important step, how actually to set uh, tasks. Usually we do it like with weekly um, meetings, with team members, it's really important. I know lots of organizations are having um, weekly meetings only uh, with volunteer, like one-to-one -one coordinator or tutor with a volunteer. Mm -hmm. If possible, it's really cool just because of the vol volunteer feels more um, uh, included to the organization. 
if you invite him or her to your weekly meetings. Sometimes it's really challenging because you have to talk in English, for example, not in your own mother tongue. So some of the information could be also lost. But this you can uh, easily do that, for example, I don't know, first half you have with the whole team in your mother tongue. And then the second half of the meeting all together with the volunteer. It's also like a good, I mean, to see how the organization team members and the volunteer are functioning and to deal with everything. Eleonora, can I ask you for the next one? And I'm giving the stage to Eleonora. Um, so now that we have been preparing the volunteer, he's been, they've been selected, they've been prepared, they have finally arrived uh, to your organization. So it's time to welcome them, orientate them and assign them their tasks. So um, there are lots of forms that this orientation of welcoming meetings can take. It can be an orientation week, it can be an arrival training um, or meeting, um, where it's uh, very good to meet with the ESC coordinators, um, project managers or task managers, other volunteers to start bonding with, especially if they're going to be working as a team, um, other uh, staff, um, staff members of your organization. Basically, uh, welcome them uh, to, to start making them feel comfortable, orientate them in their new environment where they will be uh, located, and integ start integrating them into their new local community. Following that, a discussion with the volunteer about their tasks about the overview of the program and the activities of the organization and of the tasks that the volunteer will take on while prioritizing the needs of um, and balancing the needs of uh, your organization and the volunteer and also focusing on the volunteer's interest to keep their motivation and productivity up. And finally, um, okay, this can take many forms, but a calendar or a schedule of, um, of, ta of tasks, of deadlines, maybe of materials or tools to be used to do, to complete the tasks, instructions or guidelines um, to provide the volunteer as a starting base. I think that was it in this part. And then we move on to supervision. For supervision, there was quite a discussion because we couldn't find the differences of supervision and monitoring, mainly those two things. Okay, what is supervision? What is monitoring? What's so different about it? Thankfully, there was another working group that was created specifically about supervision, what it means, how it's done. And they were very helpful for us to clarify these ideas. So we concluded that supervision is overseeing the volunteer and the tasks to be completed. And that includes enabling the volunteer to complete the tasks. So it's up to you as a task manager to enable, to give the right tools to the volunteer to do their tasks as part of supervision. So the um, working group of uh, supervision, um, which uh, they have their own tool uh, that you can um, find. I think it, all tools will be uploaded in Padlet. So if you're looking to see about supervision specifically, you can look uh, at their tool. They've provided these notes, this material that you see now in front of you, um, of the idea of enabling the volunteer as part of supervision. So first of all, providing training uh, to learn, to gain the skills, competences, and knowledge that they will need to um, do their activities, complete their tasks, providing them with the tools and the materials that they will need. For example, from the simplest thing, a desk, a chair, a laptop, if they don't have something. And also um, asking yourselves the correct questions like, what are my priorities as an organization and what do I expect from the volunteer? So you can help guide the volunteer into setting goals and improving their performances. So that's on supervision. Like I said, for more information, there is a whole working group 
I think there are actually two working groups that took different topics of supervision and they have their own tools that you can refer to. After supervision, we finally concluded that monitoring is an ongoing process of observing and checking the process, the progress of the volunteer and the task. So, okay, the volunteer has been, has arrived, has been welcomed and orientated. You have assigned their tasks. You are supervising them, enabling them to do tasks. But now, okay, how do I keep track if they're doing them or not, if they're learning or not? So we have just a few tips and suggestions. Maybe there are things that you are already implementing, maybe not. I think, okay, weekly meetings, it's something that uh, all of us do. Weekly, weekly meetings of the volunteer with the task manager specifically um, to discuss, okay, how is everything going on so far this week? What have you done? What have you learned? How, what are your impressions, your feelings? get some feedback from the volunteer about what they've been doing, but also give yourself some feedback if needed. And then look towards the next week, the next month, plan, um, plan new tasks, new deadlines, see what has been finalized or completed. Uh, as a tip, a suggestion, as something that, for example, we do our organization, we set a date, like for example, Friday morning, we, got, we get together, we have coffee and breakfast and we discuss these things. And then another thing that uh, we've also found that um, a lot of us use is um, a board that can be in hand, uh, in, in tangible or um, on your computer. Basically a board, a schedule, a, a table of the tasks um, the tasks that uh, the volunteer is supposed to do and uh, the progress, the status. So if it's to do, if it's in progress, if it's been done and finalized, maybe you go one step further and you add the options of, okay, I'm stuck or this needs review, just to have an overview of what's going on because then you can know, okay, has the volunteer finished what they were supposed to do? Do I need to give them more, more work? Would more work be too much uh, if they already have things to finalize? So it's very helpful for you because you have to do your own job, but you also have to manage what the volunteers are doing. So we found that this table could be helpful. And then we go to motivation. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Sorry, I've muted myself. So, the motivation. I think this is uh, one of the steps we really like to forget, but it's really one of the most important ones. Of course, this is also one of an ongoing processes from the start when a volunteer decides to take part in a volunteering project. project and writes a motivation letter to the end of the mobility. So we have different motivations why people are deciding to go for volunteering abroad or now also in our home countries, if we want. It's like personal growth, help and support others, social networking, skills, knowledge and experiences, active citizenship and society status, which is really interesting for me um, because I've never come across to this one before. Um, cool, thanks. <laughs> So I think the biggest question, especially when I was working with volunteers, was how to motivate them. Because you can easily see when a pers person's motivation drops. Um, what are the reasons you don't know and just don't predict. Really, conversation is the most simple method and most convenient and most effective, I would say. Um, and it's really important that the coordinator or a mentor and the volunteer came across and meet somewhere in between and find the common ground, what to do and find the solution, 
which is really, really important because nobody actually wants that the volunteer would said, okay, I really cannot do it anymore. I will just finish the project and leave. Mm -hmm. So conversation, it's easy. You can just first, okay, you have to see what is wrong, where is the reason? But here are like, for example, some sample questions, like what are the goals you want to achieve during the volunteer year? This is really important because usually volunteers come like really with great expectations, really big goals. And then maybe the situation is not as it seems you know, on the first um, sight. So it's really important to set also as already at task preparation, um, what are the goals the volunteer would like to achieve? This could be one of the motiv motivations like, okay, you have like a little, little bit, I mean, you're on, already on a good way to achieve one of your goals set. And then you're trying to push the volunteer or just, yeah, <laughs> to push him to uh, achieve the goal. Uh, really important question, what would you like to change? Um, as a volunteer mentor, tutor, supervisor, it's really important that you give them this support if they would like to change something which is possible to change, that it's not really going across with your organization's vision, then yes, I mean, why not? Uh, I think all organizations could be um, or should be open to small changes uh, brought by volunteers. Uh, one of those is also like, would you rather work on your own or in a group? As many people as we have, we have as many different approaches to work. Some of the people would like to work like alone on their own. It really motivates them best or some of them are really like good as a team players. So it's really important this to find out at the beginning, um, would the volunteer rather to be like a part of the bigger team or just to working more on their own to be more independent. One of the methods is also like rewarding system. Rewarding system, it really depends or you just take them to the swimming pool at the end of the mobility or going to the team building as we are doing in our organization um, or some other privileges. One of the systems which I quite like um, and probably we will start implementing in our organization um, are open badges. Somebody is familiar maybe with open badges? I can't see some nodding. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, because I see just the um, there. Um, open badges, I will just quickly, a few words, uh, explain it's an application where you can collect different badges like um, scouts, for example. The thing is, as organization, you can simply create your own badge. You just have to write there like the rules, what the volunteer or person who would like to get this badge needs to do for this. And you have, I don't know, for example, like five different tasks. And when you complete all these five different tasks, the volunteer gets the badge. So during the year, for example, if it's a long-term uh, ESC project, to collect, I don't know, the one who collects five badges, it can get like a present. But I think in this uh, case, if using open badges, we are not supposed to do, do like really big differences. So each who um, gets the badges, I mean, you just divide gifts or privileges or whatever you want to give them at the end um, to, I don't know, maybe different categories that actually they all feel included um to this system um eleonora can i ask you to thank you uh, at this point should we mention the other working group Please yes say? yes okay um so unfortunately the burnout working group um could not join them to not join us today uh coronavirus unfortunately so we decided to quickly, quickly present their uh, presentation, their work. What did they do? Because uh, we uh, agreed with Eleonora that burnout is one of the possibilities that could happen, especially to the volunteers or to the coordinators. 
the thing is that burnout is state of exhaust exhaustion lack of energy head i mean you get headaches you cannot really function anymore Usually it affects people who are in occupations like helping, um, supporting, providing, teaching. And I think in this group also um, people working in ESC field can easily relate to since we are supporting, helping um, to the others and it can get to a point where it's just enough, enough. What causes um, burnout? It's stress, mainly it's stress. And burnout will show in different stages. First is honeymoon. When you think you're not really aware something is going on, um, perfectly happy with your tasks, with your work. And then comes phase of awakening. You start feeling a little bad, you know something is not wrong, but you're still trying to push and to work you know, as you're a superhero. But then it comes the third phase, it's roughness. You know you're exhausted, you cannot really work anymore, but you just cannot, you just don't want to accept it. So you're pushing yourself to the fourth phase, which is full burner when you just probably collapse. I've never experienced it uh, and I hope I will never do. But yeah, from the full burner phase, when you're fully aware what is going on with your body, with your head, it comes the last phase, hopefully the renewing when you're starting again with baby steps and coming um, the right person again, if I say so. So how to avoid burnout? Um, mostly with um, physical activity, Oh, this. Um, Sorry. Ah. Yeah, you can go a little bit down. Ah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So physical activity, you you really really have to do change because if you don't do it, you will be burned out or eventually probably uh, in hospital. <laughs> Take a good rest every day and support. I think uh, these people need lots of support. And I think it's still like not really a taboo, but maybe some, uh, oh, why all of a sudden talking about burning out? I mean, if you feel tired, just sit down and you know take a nap, feel relaxed. But um, I think in the last years, we see a lot of uh, cases of people burning out. And so it's denial, it's really not, uh, the solution, I would say. Uh, I see Monica and Magda presented, I mean, um, prepared some breathing exercises also for, I think it's like this quick um, method you can use in the office with breathing. I used it before, I have to be honest with you, because I was really, uh, how to say, nervous about the workshop. So I just sit down, started breathing. <laughs> and counting to 10, so yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, this will be also included in the materials, uh, so it will be available for yours. You, have, you will see you have several links uh, to YouTube there as well, just to check um, the possibilities of the methods. Come on. The next step, uh, we have evaluation right yes so evaluation monthly meetings between volunteer and esc coordinators yeah here we touched a little bit that sometimes um we are not like a host we are not in the role of a hosting organization we are coordinating and maybe we don't see volunteers like every uh, week so we have to do at least monthly evaluations that we see what is happening with the volunteer uh, his feelings, motivation, um, satisfaction with tasks, and also uh, with other beneficiaries in the project, what is going on. So we have like a regular monthly evaluations, as I mentioned, uh, which is the basis for improving our work. Like, why do we evaluate? Because we would like to improve ourselves and our work. 
Here, uh, when you will get the presentation, you, will, you could uh, go to this Google Doc uh, file where you will see the online um, evaluation form. Uh, you can check it, you can use it, uh, you will see. And why it is online, because we know some people are really not good at talking or expressing their emotions one-to-one -one or within a group. It's easier for them just to write it down. Uh, on the online form. This is also one of the samples. Uh, you can just give them uh, like a printed A4 list to write down. Um, it's more like sample you will see on the next slide. There are like sample questions which um, they can help to you or to volunteer. Um, you can use them if you want. We would be happy if it will be helping someone. Um, yes. I mean, I was uh, coming from my personal experience here because at the beginning when I started working as a coordinator of ESC projects, I really had problem with uh, evaluating things like going more deep to um, the stuff. And of course, the final evaluation when the uh, project is almost at its ending. Um, organizations have always different methods. How do they do? Some of them, they just go to hang out for the whole weekend somewhere in the woods, walking and talking. Some of them are just preparing like a dinner with a talk. And um, it really depends, I think, but you can also use the some of the question, I mean, questions from the above slides, but usually the final evaluation, we don't really, we focus more on bigger things, like what was the personal development and learning outcomes after one year, or let's say one year, the long-term um, project, quality of mentorship, satisfaction of volunteer with tasks, uh, language course, like practicalities, like accommodation, food, um, I don't know, transport in the local community. Oh, we can go on the next. Okay. Uh, then the satisfaction of beneficiaries of volunteers works. So it means like the uh, all people involved in the project, like coordinators, tutors, mentors, volunteer, other team members, uh, quality of preparation of the project, performance of the volunteer with uh, his or her tasks, um, this is also one of the things we evaluate like regularly that we know how to improve. Uh, Im impact of the project, like how it, uh, what kind of impact the project had on organization or on the local community. And the last one, the cooperation between supporting and hosting organization. And I think this is like really important, um, the good cooperation. Um, you don't have you i mean we don't want to have problems with our partners so i think this is yeah um thank you masha and um, closing up uh these steps these chapters we thought that um things have changed since we started and we made our steps, okay, preparation, uh, motivation, monitoring, and then boom, a pandemic happened. And I'm sure if not all of you, most of you were facing um, a, a situation, having volunteers, hosting volunteers, and not knowing what to do if they were if their tasks were um, affected if they wanted to go back home, so we've added this bonus chapter. Let's say um, I, I would like to discuss it a bit more with all of you, but we just put down like the very basics of what to do in in this kind of situation, which is of course firstly see with the volunteer if they would like to go on with that activity because if it changes drastically if it's affected that drastically um, i think it's fair to say that they have the right to say okay i will not move on forward um, in this way but if um if if it has been affected but there is an alternative some other activities he could 
they could be involved in or um, tasks they could do and they agree to it, then it's, um, it's a very good thing. You, um, you make clear what changes there will be. You can in, um, make an addendum to the activity agreement and move on from there. But for example, um, in March, uh, when the first lockdown was um, implemented in Cyprus, we had an apartment full of volunteers who were going to schools. They weren't working like we had two volunteers who were in the office with us. OK, they could work remotely. Um, um, sorry, just one second. Uh, they could work remotely. Uh, but uh, we had uh, lots of volunteers who were at schools who now could not do what they came to Cyprus to do. So we suggested to, to them to write articles, write newsletters of their experiences, help the teachers by creating quizzes and sending them to the teachers so they can send it to the students, um, do photography or filming projects. There were some competitions going on uh, announced by, by the ESC or the European Commission at the time. So we tried to encourage them to get involved into these kind of activities. Um, uh, yes, I'm sure you may have your own experiences, your own stories. We are getting a message that we don't have a lot of time. Um, in any case, uh, I think I don't know, we may still five minutes. Uh, some final remarks is that from our experiences is that the more the volunteer is involved in activities and feels a member of the organization, the more useful and valuable they will be and the more productive, creative, um, motivated they will be. Uh, we hope that uh, this uh, booklet, which you already have in, in some form in the chat in PDF, if you want to download it, but we will be sending you a more, a better version of it. Uh, it will help you, uh, it will uh, guide you, uh, you can see the links, uh, the tools that we have uh, regarding evaluation or some tips about monitoring and supervision. Uh, so whether you're experienced or not, we hope this was quite uh, fruitful. Um, like we said in the Padlet, you can see the work of the other working groups who are going maybe um, in more detail about supervision or in more detail about um, um, motivation, like you saw the booklet about the burnout, which also will be available with all of the tools. Uh, so yes, we have a disclaimer here. Okay, I'm going to stop share. So I think we don't have a lot of time actually but I will try to speak some and we try to keep you for five more minutes. We have a Kahoot quiz prepared for you, which if you give me two seconds, I will send you the link and the code. In the meantime, do you have any questions for us, any suggestions of your own good practices, any story that you would like to briefly share? We are listening. Um, I, I would like to share something. Um, I don't remember I saw it. Uh, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a practice I am using since the day we started having volunteers in my organization. I'm creating um, a, a group after, the, after we choose the volunteers and they choose us. I create a group in Messenger or WhatsApp and I, I send them a few things, we talk, we make video calls and they meet each other uh, on, on, on Messenger, actually. <laughs> and it's like, I, they feel like they know the people they're going to see when they arrive. So, and not only that, and also the, the, the volunteers that they're gonna live with. And I find it useful and funny <laughs> because they are talking between them when they are uh, on the airport, that uh, if they want, um, is crying the other is encouraging him so it's really nice <laughs> thank you Andre. yes indeed uh, we always have volunteers like asking ah do you know already who else is coming who am i going to be living with can i have their email address their facebook and we usually try to create a facebook group as soon as possible as soon as the team is formed so they can get on there 
of course, a chat group may, be, may sound very simple, but it's one of the most basic, most useful tools to yeah. uh, keep track with the volunteers. And uh, in addition, I think in our case, they make their own group as well without the ESC coordinators, and it's nice to see them yes, more. Yes, true. <laughs> So if I may steal just a few minutes from you, uh, I've sent you a game pin for Kahoot. You just go to the basic Kahoot site and you put on the game pin. It's just to sum up what we said during the tool um, and also get some of your feedback. If that would be the case, I see Val, Maria, Irene, Carla, Alex. So we have like five people. Can, I, can everybody join or less? I can see more people. Uh, Eleonora? Yes. Oh, you put the game pin. Maybe I yes. have some um, yes, yes. difficulties with chat. Does no, 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 I have it. Yeah, in the chat to everyone. Yeah, okay. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Can I just wait for a couple of minutes? Yes, more people. Yay. Ah, I will actually be sharing my screen now so you can see what I'm seeing. Come on, people, join. Hmm. 11. I think we have. Three or four more people? Shall I wait? If not, I can move on forward, whatever you wish. Okay, I think I see some thumbs up that I should move on. We are running out of time anyway. So I am going to move on, sorry, let's start. Volunteers task management quiz. Let's see what you've, if you've been paying attention to us. So for the preparation of the volunteer and the task they are about to take on, who is responsible? We have the hosting organization, the sending organization, the coordinating organization, or all of the above. I can see people are answering. Yes, yes. So exciting. Good. Next. We will see, oh, Carla is first. No, why is it zero points for everybody else? And I will move on forward. Yeah. Which step is overseeing the volunteer and the task? You have to type in. There is still five seconds. Yes. True or false? Monitoring is an ongoing process of observing and checking the progress of the volunteer and their task. Good, good, good. Great. Perfect. We will see the final points later. Ah, now I can see the points. Great. Ah, this is a fine one, hopefully. <laughs> this is a bit funny one. Yes. Great. Yay. And now we would like some of your feedback and we're going back to the session. Sorry for keeping you longer. We just want to see how you find the first, the um, 
uh, the online booklet. Yay! <laughs> and then we would like to finally see how you found this workshop presentation. We hope that we had uh, more time with you. Unfortunately, we do not. Uh, they are calling for us to go back. Um, we thank you yes. very, very much. We thank you very, very much for joining our workshop. We hope it was fruitful, helpful, or at least interesting. Let's see what you wrote. Come on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Okay. Let's see just the winners. So we have like Alex is in third place. Tudor in second place and in first place. Carla! Woo! You have to send them the open badge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are sorry that we didn't have any more time to talk with you. We knew this was going to happen. We were trying to be as brief as possible, but also interactive as possible. So thank you very much. Everyone should just press the blue button of leave the room and we'll see you in the main session. Thank you, everybody. And thank we'll you. be sending you the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.